Good evening everyone, my name is Boom Slang. Tonight, I'll be discussing a variety of syndromes and conditions relating to mental health. After reading a news article on one of the entries, I did some follow-up research and found it to be an interesting topic to cover. I hope you enjoy the video. Before we continue, I want to emphasize that this video does not intend to trivialize any viewers who may have these conditions. I am aiming to just shed some light on less well-known conditions that exist throughout the world. Main character syndrome is what led me into further rabbit holes. This particular case is associated with an individuality complex and a generally self-centered outlook on life. People with this condition typically see themselves as the protagonists and stars of a TV show, movie, or even book revolving around their life. For instance, an orphan who reads an issue of a Batman comic might relate to Bruce Wayne, as both them and the fictional character lost their parents at a young age. Even if the details between them and their favorite characters are vastly different, they'll often change some aspects of their personality to make themselves more like those that they admire. This can be positive, but in most cases this leads to a more self-centered lifestyle. Those with main character syndrome also see their friends around them as side characters or a supporting cast for a story that centers around them. While this is viewed as more of a social media trend than a dangerous mental condition by psychiatrists, these traits can lead into narcissism and a deep social disconnect. Overall, it manifests as more of a cultivated personality trait than a personality disorder. This mental condition is deeply associated with the Shona people group in the African country of Zimbabwe. It's often referred to as kufungisia, or thinking too much. It's considered to be a source of anxiety or depression. If you find yourself without something to do and begin to settle on uncomfortable thoughts or concerns about events in your life, you're experiencing something very similar to kufungisia. This overall condition involves ruminating and becoming depressed, and has a variety of different names throughout different cultures in Africa, Latin America, East Asia, Native American societies, and the Caribbean. However, the Zimbabwe variant generally causes headaches and dizziness, deriving from deep contemplation. This form of depression can result in great physical distress. Clinical lycanthropy is a delusion in which affected individuals believe that they can transform into a werewolf. Despite the association with werewolves, due to the name, this personality disorder can apply to those who believe that they can transform into other animals. Since 1850, there have been 56 case reports involving people afflicted by this personality disorder, 13 of which believe that they could turn into a wolf. I'd argue there's closer to 2.8 million cases of this form of delusion worldwide. The most famous instance of clinical lycanthropy is King Nebuchadnezzar in the Book of Daniel. For those that don't know the story, the king of Babylon was cursed by God for his hubris and descended into madness for a period of seven years, left his hair and fingernails uncut, and chewed cud like a cow. This has been identified as a species of lycanthropy, called boanthropy, the belief that you can turn into a cow. According to this definition, Griffith probably has a minor case of clinical lycanthropy. Kial Gap is a form of panic attack that happens to individuals throughout Cambodian communities in the US and Cambodia. Its symptoms are most identical to panic attacks, including dizziness, shortness of breath, neck soreness, and heart palpitations. Kial Gap roughly translates to wind attacks and is described by victims as a wind rising in their bodies. Interestingly, studies from the scientific journal Culture, Medicine, and Psychiatry found that this condition was common among Cambodian refugees suffering from PTSD. After fleeing the bloody genocide known as the Khmer Rouge, in the preceding Cambodian Civil War. This condition is initiated from exposure to large art collections, pieces of art, and beautiful works of architecture that are striking to the viewer. Stendhal syndrome results in hallucinations, 
mania, and anxiety, and is named for a French author of romantic fiction named Mary Henry Bale, who went by the pseudonym Stendhal. Bale experienced intense panic attacks and general confusion when he made a trip to Florence, Italy in 1817 and saw the beautiful architecture and the beautiful sepulchers of the Santa Croce Basilica. Here's a brief description he gave. My soul, affected by the very notion of being in Florence, and by the proximity of those great men whose tombs I had just beheld, was already in a state of trance. Absorbed in the contemplation of sublime beauty, I had attained that supreme degree of sensibility where the divine imitations of art merge with the impassioned sensuality of emotion. It's tough being a French poet and author in the early 19th century. You've got to make sure you have someone near you to catch you when you witness literally anything. As a result, Mr. Bale gets to be the first man on my official Dante Alighieri Wall of Poets Who Fainted. Cases are most common among travelers who make their way to cities known for great works of art, such as Paris, Athens, or Cleveland. Researchers believe that Stendhal Syndrome is most likely to affect those with impressionable personalities who are overwhelmed by a mixture of stressful travel and encountering beautiful things being driven to deep reflection on one's place in the world. A person visiting an ancient monastery in Milan having a religious awakening, or a tourist witnessing a breathtaking sunrise from the face of Mount Fuji, they would both be susceptible to Stendhal Syndrome. Depersonalization or derealization disorder is in essence exactly what it sounds like. Victims of this condition begin to feel detached from their surroundings and view themselves from outside their own body. Symptoms often include feeling like a robot, feeling as if you have no control over speech and movement, believing that your limbs are distorted or shrunken, an impression that your head is covered in cotton, distortion of time, space, and objects, and a sense that past memories are not your own. This is often caused by a reaction to medication and re recreational drugs. Alien Hand Syndrome is an interesting entry. It's classified by the belief that a person's hand has a life of its own. Those affected by this often have normal feeling in the hand without numbness or other symptoms like ghost hand syndrome, but are convinced that their hand has a separate agenda. Their hand will often move with a complete mind of its own, often brushing over a person's face or picking compulsively at objects, will even close a drawer that the other hand has just opened. This is caused by damage to the corpus callosum, a part of the brain that connects the two central hemispheres of the brain. This can be caused by traumatic injury or a stroke. While this condition might sound weird from the accounts of those affected by it, it is absolutely terrifying and can last from a range of a few days to years. Capgras syndrome is the most sus of all the entries in this video. Those afflicted with Capgras see those around them as imposters, often believing that their close family members and friends have been replaced by doppelgangers. They'll often be unable to tell the faces of strangers from the faces of familiar family members. A case study from 2007 by one Dr. Keith Josephs revealed that this occurrence can be an after effect to memory loss. People with underlying medical conditions such as schizophrenia, dementia, and epilepsy are often struck by this but Capgras Syndrome can be treated through medication. Alice in Wonderland Syndrome is most common in kids between the ages of 5 and 10 around nighttime. It bears some similarities to derealization disorder, as those experiencing it often feel a change in their perception of their body and other objects around them, a perceived change in their walking speed, and violent hallucinations. Alice in Wonderland Syndrome was initially described and cataloged by the British psychiatrist John Todd. Todd named it after the book of the same name, as it caused a victim to experience a constant change in height, like the Lewis Carroll book. Lewis Carroll is suspected of basing these scenes in his book off his own experiences 
with an undiagnosed case of Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. If your uncle at the family reunion drops some facts about Lewis Carroll being high on drugs, you can counter with this scholarly theory. Truman Syndrome is a more recent condition that derives from the movie The Truman Show. Truman Syndrome creates a sense that a person is the subject of a TV show like the main character of the movie played by Jim Carrey. Here's a couple of excerpts from a case study of people with this condition. Case 1. Mr. A. Mr. A claimed his life was like the Truman Show, a belief that he had held for five years without his family's knowledge. He believed the 9-11 attacks were fabricated and traveled to New York to see if the Twin Towers were still standing, and if they were, it would prove that he was the star of his own show. He believed that everyone in his life was part of the conspiracy and he had cameras implanted in his eyes. When he was admitted to the psychiatry department, he asked to speak to the director. He was diagnosed as having schizophrenia, and more specifically, a chronic paranoid type versus substance-induced psychotic disorder. Case 3. Mr. C. Mr. C, a journalist, had a history of depression and was manic and psychotic. He believed that stories in newspapers, online, and on television were created by his colleagues in the media for his personal amusement. He believed that those around him were paid actors, that everything around him was fake, and that all his associates are involved. During his hospitalization, Mr. C attempted to escape to confirm that there were disparities between the news given on the ward and what was happening outside. He was diagnosed as having bipolar disorder with psychotic features. It seems like a few people with previous cases of schizophrenia who have at some point seen reality television and become infatuated with it are susceptible to this condition, but very few. Erotomania is a trope often seen in some genres of movies and books. It's a form of delusion in which someone believes that someone else, most often of a different age or in a different social circle, is in love with them. Sometimes, this condition can develop to the point that the afflicted will actively stalk and pursue the person they are interested in. Cases of erotomania have skyrocketed recently due to the impact of social media and the removal of privacy for online celebrities. Also, when I was doing research for this entry, three different sites giving information on this disease asked me for my location, so you're welcome. I'm probably on a watch list somewhere. Prosopagnosia is often called face blindness, and for good reason. It affects people of a variety of ages, and makes the affected unable to recognize the faces of their family members and even romantic partners. It can be present in a person from birth, or initiated by a head injury. Those affected by it often memorize people's voices or movements to remember them and keep people's identities straight. Sayora is a disorder that is attributed to a single tribe in India called the Orissa. Young men and women of the tribe report the feeling of being constantly bitten by ants, despite the fact that none are nearby. Cotard syndrome is relatively rare, with only 200 cases recorded in medical history. It bears a heavy resemblance to the condition earlier in this video where people had a desire to amputate. Cotard causes its victims to believe that some of their limbs are missing, or even that they are dead. People will sometimes refuse to eat, believing that they have passed away and don't need to recover their energy anymore. In one 2008 case in New York City, a woman was found in a mortuary locker after sending an initially cryptic text telling her extended family that she had passed away. Fortunately, she was quickly found and later given proper psychi psychiatric assistance. Harris Syndrome is like a Shakespeare play, both tragic, funny, and even crude at the same time. This occurs to tourists who visit the City of Lights and realize that the city isn't all that they imagined. This is often made by a combination of jet lag, encountering a language barrier, and difference in customs. People will often experience nausea, headaches, sweating, and even hallucinations after having their ideas of what Paris is encounter a heavy reality check. 
the fact that the entire city doesn't smell like Chanel perfume, along with the presence of often, often hostile locals, the difference between ads for Paris, the reality that's dirty like any other big city, creates a deep sense of anxiety for some tourists. Truth be told, there's not mimes on every corner, and the city isn't populated by no one but beautiful French models. I'm going to leave this video on that comparatively high note. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of some interesting mental health conditions. I'll see you next video. Take care, and good night.